All right. Uh, to everybody out there uh, who's listening to us, uh, thank you so much for joining in for the webinar. We are so sorry about uh, the glitch that we were not able to, you were not able to hear the speaker so well. Uh, just want to welcome you to the second, uh, you know, second webinar on the Change Leader series. Uh, here we have, the series is all about identifying change leaders who've been there, done that. And uh, today we have Nishant Goel, who is, you know, a, an expert in API testing and automation. Uh, so he will be speaking about simplifying API testing and automation. So, uh, you know, we're, we're so happy to have Nishant Goel in amongst our midst. Uh, he carries six years, six plus years of experience. And, you know, he's a proud, a proud YouTuber who is also doing uh, Fundu testers as a side hustle. So over to Nishant. Uh, thank you so much for you know, accepting our invite and being able to come and join us. Over to you, Nishant. Thank you, Dinakar. Thank you, everyone. Uh, welcome, everyone, for joining here. So today I'm going to speak on uh, API testing. We are, today's agenda is uh, what is API testing, why we have to do the API testing, how we can approach API testing, what can be the plan of API testing, what can be the difference between the mobile web versus API testing. Further, we are going to um, discuss few myths or mistakes that day-to-day uh, -day we are doing and later on tips and collaboration. So let's start with the basic thing. What is a API? So whenever we are going to any restaurant, so here in this slide you can see one is on a, one side is a cooking area or another side is a dining area. So whenever we are going to the restaurant, we are not going directly going to the dining area and we can place the order. There will be one mediator which is called as a we can refer as a waiter. So we are basically we are going to the waiter. We can say hi sir, I want to. Uh, I would I would like to have this. So waiter is basically go to uh, dining area with our order and he will come back with the food. So like this, these things happen. Similar way in a software industry, we have a front end and, and we have a back end. So whenever we have to do some per operation, basically request will go to the back end in a form of a API and we will get a uh, response from the back end. So uh, back end will process the data, it will validate the data, whatever data we have asked from the front uh, front end. Backend will validate the data in respective format. We will receive the response in a front end. And front end also proceed the data. It will uh, display data in an appropriate format like a tabular view or uh, some appropriate content. And this is the in general flow of API testing. We, we, we request something from the front end, it will go to the backend and we will receive again the response but the thing is nowadays we are consuming apis unknowingly we are using so many applications like instagram facebook linkedin and by that time we are consuming loads of apis so how we are going to uh, how we are unknowingly consuming the apis so for example let's say we are going to a uh, instagram there we are going to upload the photos so first will be we are going to upload the photo later on let's say i have to change some caption or hashtags so i'm uploading i'm again editing the photo i'm changing the caption after after a while if someone is liking or someone has commented so as a human nature we again go to the instagram profile and we, we will check how many people has liked how many people has commented on it and, and if no one is liked, then we are going to delete the photos. So this is how unknowingly we have consumed the APIs. First one is a post API, put API, third one is a get API, and last one is a delete API. So unknowingly we have performed the card operation. In real time world also, if there are no APIs, we are using any applications, we are doing this operation. If we are going to the bank also bank also we are going to create a bank account can be referred as a post call later on we are updating the profile we are providing the details we are providing the documents that we can refer as a put call we are updating the data later on we have made some transaction we are printing our uh, passbook or we are checking a transaction history so that we can refer as a get account and lastly if we are moving to the another bank and we are deleting the bank account then we can say we have delete we have performed the delete operation so entire software industry exists based on the card operation we have to 
think in a mindset of a curd operation whatever we are doing we are unknowingly performing a curd operation but this concept is looks easy in uh, listening or watching or understanding but in real world how it works how we can perform api testing how we can work on api testing but before moving forward if we are doing something then there should be some purpose so first we have to understand what is the purpose behind api testing why i have to do the api testing and why i have to learn the api testing so if someone is building a application some company has started building a some application so definitely they are going to start with the back end if they are going to build a back end then there should be some testing team and testing is going a testing team is going to test apis a similar way if you are working on a ui or if you are working on a mobile application or web web application along with we are nowadays we are testing apis as well why we have to test apis to do the in depth validation or there are some flow that practically uh, as a end user manually we are performing but if we are going to do the automate or while using programming language it can be difficult to deal with that somehow we have to go with the apis for example let's say i am uh, sending few uh, sending money from google pay to my friend and i have to replicate same flow using the automation so it will be difficult using a apm or real time devices i i am going to perform some transaction on a mobile and b device i have to validate so taking care of two devices can be difficult or little bit challenging so instead of what can be done as a first device as a center device i can use a real, real device or for receiver i can use a apis so i can perform a transaction i can do all the validations i can do the testing with the help of real devices and apis for in depth validation if you are going to going for a manual test or functional test also we can cross check the data whatever test we have performed those are uh, concrete or not that's why we have to learn api testing and we have to perform the api testing now the question is what can be the path of api testing how can i start learning api testing so first step will be always a boring step we have to go with the theory we have to understand concept what is a get api what is a post api what is a http request code we have to sometimes even we have to mug up the concept we have to learn the characteristic of a get api if i am going to perform a get api how i am going to build the api this all things we have to do if we, later on we can move to the postman now i have a apis get api and post api i want to execute the get api using the postman then how can i do it where can i select the get method how can i pass a parameter what can be the type of parameter is it a path parameter or query parameter or with the get api body is needed or not so these things we have to do once we are comfortable with the basic operations then we can say we are we know basic things about the api later on we can simply move to the automation part we can uh, the same thing whatever apis we have executing using the postman the same thing we can do using any programming language there are certain library along with the uh, certain programming language if i am going with the java then i have to use rest assured or jersey or http client but if i am going with the python then i have to use some certain library so according to the tech skill only we have to choose the libraries or programming language we cannot learn everything my area is a java then i cannot learn why how it is working with the java or sorry python or how it is working with the javascript so we have to again focus with the core technical skill as well and last if everything is done then later on we can convert into a framework now i'll give you uh, some example code walk through so i am going to a uh, spring sts where i have a dev i have developed a few apis and this is the basic uh, application uh, there are simply four class one first one is a topic class there i have defined what are the fields will be there for each and every topic topic is basically a course uh, for example selenium course or postman course or uh, uh, some other tutorial so basically it will be id name and description and along with the controller i have developed the five different apis so one is a get all topics api get particular topic api or some post or put apis are there so here we can see there are five different apis i have developed so let me start the application 
uh, first of all why i am going to showcase the api development to learn api testing because i want to convey a message that api development itself it is not a difficult so api testing shouldn't be a difficult here i have developed the five different api and if i am going to the postman so first one is a get all topic api and here i can see this is the base uri up to localhost 8080 and topics is my endpoint so here same thing i have mapped with the uh, code topics is a endpoint for a single get api if i want to get a single data then i have to pass the id as a path parameter so the same thing i have built with the single i this is the topics and selenium is a id so if i execute the topics api i will get a data so this is the data there are five different courses sorry four courses selenium postman software testing and rest assured and course name i have mapped as a id so if i am going to use the single value then i am getting a selenium so now i will get a response as a selenium detail only now i want to add a topic so how we are going to add a topic based on a particular value and i have for a development for a get request no need to pro specify the method uh, spring boot by default it consider if there is a no request method then it will be a by default uh, get method else we have to provide request method dot post or put or delete so for post uh, path uh, endpoint is a topic for a put endpoint is a slash topic slash id based on the particular id we are updating the data for example i want to update selenium this object only name is a complete selenium course i want to update as a something so based on the id we are going to update similar way for a delete also based on a id we are going to perform a delete operation so here also same thing will be there so let me perform a post operation and i am going to add one value one course which is a jmeter so if i hit the request i will get a status as a 200 okay and if i again hit the get all topics so there should be jmeter course should be there so jmeter is added now i want to update for example i want to update the selenium course so i am going to update api and again uh, with the post and put api there should be a body if you, i am hitting a delete api or get api there shouldn't be a body there will be a path parameter so query parameters so now i am updating a name as a updated selenium course earlier it is a complete selenium course so once i hit the put api i will receive a response as a 200 okay and now again i am going to a get all topics so now you can see name has been updated now it is a updated selenium course the same thing if i am going to perform a delete operation and i am deleting some data so selenium should get deleted now if i am going to add again get all topics api so now we cannot see selenium here so how what is the logic behind there if we are going to learn anything we should have some eagerness to learn how things are working so here i have not i am not going to do any rocket science these all are basic stuff this syntax are coming from a spring boot request mapping like a test ng we have annotation the same they have basic annotations and this parameters everything is coming from a rest assured and here also i with this i just created a basic method so what i am doing basically my logic is here this is a, i have created a static list where i have defined a four different value now if i am performing get operation so ideally i have stored the data in a one table or one list or one map so what i have to do basically i have to consume i have to get all the data so i am just pushing all this object and i will get as a response code now i am going to do the get single value how we are going to do from the list let's say for example from the list i need to get one particular element so i have to pass that particular element id and i will get appropriate value so i have written the one simply getting data from the list if i am going to add one value so i have created a list now i have to add one value so what i have to do simply list dot add the same thing i am passing i have created a one topic object in topic object this data will be there and along with this list i am just simply adding the object and if i have to update the list then what i have to do simply i have to iterate through array and i can get appropriate data the same thing for example let's say i have to 
automate the things. So this also coming with basic syntax. This is the REST SEO I have uh, done with the Java and REST with help of REST SEO. So initially what I have to do, I have to just set a base URI. So I'm just giving a base URI, which is a, a local host 8080. There are three part HTTP, uh, sorry, REST SEO is working on a uh, behavior driven framework like a BDD. So there is a given when and then flow. So in given part, we are passing a base URI later on a when. So in when part, if it is a get request, then what will be the characteristics of the get request? We have to pass headers and parameters. If it is a post request, then we have to pass a, along with the post request, we have to pass body along with the headers. If it is a put request, we have to pass headers and body. So it looks simple. First part, we are just setting up the base URI. Second part, based on the characteristics, we are passing the data, header or body or headers or params. And at the last part, which is a get part, get part, what we have to do, we are just specifying the method name. If it is a get request, then we have to pass get. If it is a post request, we have to pass a post. Similar way for a put and delete. And in bracket, we have to pass the endpoint. So like this, we can execute any APIs or any, we can trigger any uh, HTTP request using the REST issued in Java. But here our job is not done. This is just a basic. If we reach here, we can say we have just covered a 10%, still 90% is remaining. So what part is remaining? Their mistakes and myths come into a picture. Most of the things what happen, some many times testers or developers are going to start building a new things or start learning a new things. At some point of time, they will assume that we have learned everything. Now I am able to take a new challenges, but there are many parties left. So at some after some point of time, we cannot say I have learned everything. Still, you have to explore and learn from so many areas. You whatever you we have learned, we have to implement in real time process as well. There are lots of people are saying why we need to test API. We are testing API, uh, application. So this question I have answered. Uh, we are working on nowadays. We are working on a very complex application. If we go to the one decade uh, back, there uh, there was very easy application, just like a form filling or ticket booking or bank, uh, basic banking systems over there. But nowadays we are dealing with uh, so many complicated APIs. We have implemented ML, machine learning algorithm. There are so many algorithms are running behind the application. There are lots of data. We reach to the big data. We are dealing with the so many advanced algorithms. So that's why to fulfill that, we have to test APS because from the UI, we can see UI is very small, but backend will be huge. So we cannot just test entire application from the UI itself. We have to go to the one layer down, two layer down, multiple layer down. We have to test API, we have to test database, everything we need to test. And there can be another assume or myths can be there. API testing is easy or API testing can be hard or I'm not interested into API testing. I am well, uh, I know very well mobile automation or web automation or web application testing. So we can not compare APIs with the UI or API with the other another platform because everyone has their own exact uh, existing and their own purpose. Well, there is a purpose, then only we are going to test the API. And it depends on the product. If it's a complex product, then API also should be a complex. If it is a easy product, then API also should be a easy. So we can not compare like this. Now, the question is, I know what is API testing. I can write a few API tests, but I don't know what to test. So the first question will be, what can, what is a problem statement? According to the problem statement only, we can perform a testing, whether it, it can be API or it can be a UI. What is a problem? What is a product? Which domain we are working on? If it for every APS, it will be a same. Then few company will create automation framework and it will sell to they will sell to the every company. So there are no one is going to build a new framework. They just consume the uh, inbuilt framework and start implementing uh, their own test cases. It is not like that. We have to first we need to understand the problem statement. What is a problem statement? Recently we have deal with a 
in uh, my previous project we are moving from uh, legacy to microservices architecture and uh, i was working on a huge product where in qa only we have seven to eight environment they have different numbers of environment we have stage environment multiple we have production environment and for each and every country there so there are different uh, uh, servers there it is pointing to so the problem statement was uh, during that time we have to test apis and uh, there are two multiple servers pointing to the same database so for example environment one and environment two both are pointing to the da database one so how we are going to test because database was too, too huge if i am going to hit any gate api so response code was like a 500 lines of a json data or thousand line of json data so what we did we we are triggering a request from the environment one we are uh, receiving some data we are triggering requests from environment two we are receiving some data and we are comparing if you know both the data both the json data are same or not if some data is missing on environment one then we are making some list if some data is missing on environment two then we are making some list and if uh, data is uh, both the environment is key but values are different then it is a bug if i'm uh, uh, updating something on environment two then environment one also it should get reflected so this all kind of test we have performed apart from we have to do the validations we can perform extensive validation from the ui uh, sorry from the api instead of a ui and if we do the extensive validation from the api maintenance will be less compared to the ui why because let me go to the some application for example let me go to the facebook so here we can see i am going to the uh, create new account flow so there should be sign up api should be there but in ui also i can see the sign up there is a first name surname mobile number and so many fields are here now if i automate sign up flow with the multiple sets of the data multiple validations i have to again every time i have to come to the ui i have to write a expert for this element and there can be chance of multiple failures from the ui side but what if i'm going to automate from the uh, api side how can i do it there will be some simple json request and there i have to just manipulate the data so for example let's say i'm going to a uh, I'm going to a uh, sign up API. So like that, we can build a, a JSON object, like a first name, whatever data we are going to pass, we have to just write those data. Similar way, we have to just write the last name. And we have to pass the names and so on. There will be multiple fields. Now, if I'm going to update for a UI, so UI, I have to, again, I have to inspect this element. I have to send data, but instead of this, I am doing an extensive validation on the API side. I just need to uh, just update the string value here and object will be similar. I'm not going to deal with the X path or uh, UI interaction. So there are less chance of a failure. If, if we are going to the API testing, API uh, extensive validation, then it will be easy compared to the UI uh, testing and we can perform an extensive testing here and for a ui side we can just do with the basic regression test or acceptance testing and data integration we can do for example let's say we are using uh, some third party applications like uh, i'm working on an e-commerce platform for a payment gateway i have to deal with uh, some bank sdks credit card debit card net banking or some upi payment so we are integrating with the multiple platform there i need to check i'm sending a sufficient data or not i'm not che check sending extra data for example upi sdk is expecting few sets of a data like a name basic details amount details so i'm passing appropriate data or not and what is the acknowledgement i'm receiving so those all things we have to test and we can make an end-to-end -end scenarios with the api for example i'm going to a flip card i'm performing some search operation then search api should be there later on i have to add some product to the cart so eight cart api should be there there i have to pass the product id and later on i have to update the quantity 
then update quantity api should be there later on i'm making a payment or a address so a address api should be there so like this we have to create a flow in a mind and we have to perform the operation so this uh, that's why i can say api testing is a mind game because in ui whatever things we are going let's say i'm going to a flip card here and we are performing some operations so ui it is a is, we are getting a ready made flow i have to search a mobile phone so i just need to enter the values and i will get the things but if we are going to perform a api testing there is a search api i have to add uh, headers i have to add a uh, body if or i have to add a path parameter if it is a get request then first i have to make a flow in my mind like uh, it first will be a get api only and it is a search api later on add product api should be there so there should be i from the search result i need to get a particular product id and based on this product id i can i have to hit add to cart product and i have to pass this id so again this is the second flow so ui i am getting a ready made flow but api i have to create the flow what can be the flow so that's why API API testing is a little bit tricky, but you know, once we are going to start API testing, it will be easy. It should be easy. And once we have complete uh, understanding of API, what are the things we are going to test? How we are going to test? What can be the flow? Then final thing will be framework. How we are going to deal with the framework? So based on I, as I said, based on the problem statement, we have to create a framework. So nowadays we are dealing with the complex things. The framework can be a complex. So we have to deal with the which data we are going to use as a test data management. We are storing into XML file, JSON file, XML file. If data is going to be updated by an expert or testing or testers or developer teams who know the coding, then we can go with the JSON lava. Like it's, it is easy to update and it is a lightweight. We can easily read and write the things but if someone like a non-technical team or project manager so who is who is not familiar with the test automation framework and he has to update the data in that case we can go with the excel file so this comes with the experience which files how we are going to manage the things later on we are going to deal with the so many utilities we are getting the data uh, we have file file handler handlers we are reading data from the databases we so there are so many utilities apart from traceability so what what can, what can we refer as a traceability for example let's say there are five microservices i have to create a one suite as a regression suite one as a smoke and i have to execute partial suite like, like for example complete smoke testing and few tests from the regression so how we are mapping the test how we are grouping the test even nowadays, along with the so many tools and technologies, we can execute tests from the multiple places, like a local execution, we can execute on the Docker, we can execute on the Bitbucket, even though we can execute from the test management tool, like a, a Jira we have integrated with the X-Ray. So directly from the X-Ray also, we can execute the test. So we have to make sure that how X-Ray is consuming the data, how X-Ray is passing data to the framework, what type of data integration happens so based on that we have to think we have to create an architecture of a test automation framework and this architecture is a not for a today we are building in present but we are building for a future why i'm saying we are building for a future for example we all are using a zomato application few years back pro membership uh, functionality was not there but later on they have implemented uh, pro membership functionality now if we have to automate the pro membership functionality everywhere after adding product to the cart we we are going to apply the coupon or it is going to check that the user is pro membership or not so there can be architectural changes so to minimize that we have to make sure that we are going to use uh, right principle uh, we have implemented framework correctly we are using a uh, appropriate uh, uh, oops concept or design concept because in future if we have to implement or if we have to change something there will be minimal minimum changes it shouldn't be a vast changes for a small thing uh, small changes shouldn't be a huge code level changes so we have to take care of all these things and test reporting also nowadays is a very crucial part 
we can know just real uh, rely on a lu report or extent report uh, recently we have created a template based on the html and css and for that we need to take a help from the uh, development team as well and we have solved here one problem as well initially what we used to do we used to uh, send a report in a mail for example there are 10 8 uh, uh, receivers who will receive a html template in a mail and they will just download and open the in a browser but later on what we have faced a problem is um, report size was around 8 mb 5 mb because we used to execute more than 500 tests so every time uh, it is going to create a junk data on a mailbox and ma mail memory was increasing on daily basis every day it is consuming 50 mb 60 mb 17 mb to overcome this problem what we did we have hosted our test report html template into aws cloud and we instead of just giving html template we are just giving a uh, url of that particular s3 bucket uh, report template so just need to click and we can it will open on a browser and later on after a few days we are just clearing data from a s3 bucket so like this if we are moving ahead with the new technology new problem will come and we have to think on a new problem how we are going to solve the new problem and there are some more tips whenever we are going to start something we are going to learn uh, learn something we are learning for a future we are not learning for a today so we have to take a decision on a step by step we have to learn step by step for example let's say we have seen like a uh, whenever we are interns or we have started working on any technology or during the first job hr used to ask a question what where you want to see yourself after five years by that time we have created a meme what is a useless question there is no value after five years wherever i wanted to go i will go no but it was a very technical and tricky question as a individual or as a learner or as a software engineer we have to predict our future where we are wanted to see ourselves after a five, uh, five years or after a uh, seven years because what happens if we are not sticking with the technology we think uh, i am going to learn a python but after two years i lose the interest on a python and i start working on a javascript later on i start working on a java so i will spend around six to seven years and i two two years like i worked on java two years i worked on mobile automation two years i worked on a web a web application testing i have spent eight years but i'm not an expert in any field and if someone is going to hire eight years experience guy who who should have a concrete api testing experience or concrete ui testing experience are you able to eligible i don't think so because at that particular time at that level of experience you should be able to add value to the product for let's say they have already created a framework everything in in place but execution time is a five hours and they want to reduce as a challenge they want to reduce from five hours to three hours so if you don't have concrete knowledge or expertise in particular area i don't think so anyone can reduce the uh, execution time from five hours to three hours so it comes with the experience and expertise that's why we have to make a goal what will be the future we should not compromise with the technology we can compromise with the salary somehow we have to make a habit of a learning every day somehow we have to consume a informative content it can be from a social media like a twitter or linkedin from can be anywhere we can read a, some uh, like a cheat chat during the cheat chat we can go with some micro blogs nowadays so many people are writing a threads on a linkedin it can be informative or whenever we we think so i have to watch a tv before watching we can go to the youtube and we can watch some one or two videos we have to make a habit of a learning it is a continuous effort we cannot learn anything in a day or a month we have to learn from a developer or we have to learn from a surrounded people like a, it can be a business guy it can be a product manager or it can be anyone devops or anyone why we need to learn we have to understand their perspective how particular person is looking a product how he is going to add a value or what is a working style for example let's say i'm sitting next to the developer and he is debugging some issue some production issue or some other issues so 
by the time i cannot just uh, you know, chat with my friends i if i have some time and i'm sitting next to the developer i i can learn how he is going to debug because he is not going to teach me i can few things we can learn unconsciously we can learn by seeing and we have to simplify the problem whatever the problems we are dealing with we have to simplify problems everything can be easy and everything can be hard it depends on the perspective and we have to add some spice for example if we are a first time we are executing web automation test using the selenium it looks good we are writing some lines of the code and it is opening the browser and it is going to the facebook it looks pretty awesome but we are working on a programming language let's say oops concept it is pretty boring too much boring things even kids will get bored and experience will get bored so how we can make more interesting for example instead of writing just inheritance or uh, encapsulation code we have created a parent class and child class and now i am able to call the parent class and child class it should be boring so how we can add some spice we can consider as a application for example let's say we can create as a banking application there will be a, some field like each and every user has a name telephone number initial bank amount so we can create a pojo complex uh, pojo class we can implement using the encapsulation there will be some getters and setters so on top of that we can create some constructor there will be some inheritance and we have to use some mechanism of the withdraw and deposit functionality this basic code it will look little interesting and it will uh, it will help to understand and it will help to do, uh, do the more learning we can continue uh, with this we can do the continuous learning and last if we are going to the work on api so for api testing critical part is a json we have to day by day we have to learn how we can play around with the json how we can write how we can read how we can deal with the complex json nested json dynamic json if we have a grip on a json many uh, we know how to manipulate the json then api testing will be definitely easy at last we have to focus on a testing and development principles because nowadays development as well as the testing is a, a little bit tricky and complex so we have to focus on a coding part we have to focus on a core testing principles observation skills we should have a product knowledge we should know if we are testing on a particular application or as a tester or as a developer or as a designer or whatever if you are working on a particular application we should know which area application is generated revenue for example let's take an example of uh, instagram it is a uh, free anyone can open a instagram account and anyone can upload the photo and anyone can uh, view the watch the reels but if how instagram is generating the revenue we have to think on that they raise some revenue stream which is a ad using the ad or promotion they are going to generate the revenue so we have to concentrate how things are working how product are working what is a user mindset how user is going to use the product because we are testing in some way he is the user is as a end user he is working on some another way so will be a conflict so we have to understand as a technical person as well as the as a end user like a example if it is a wallet application initially we have started uh, using a phone pay google pay paytm phone pay comes with the a discount uh, phone pay used to provide a cash back that's why we have started using the phone pay uh, sorry uh, google pay but nowadays we still we are using a google pay or still we are using a phone pay they are not uh, uh, giving a cash back nowadays but period of the time they have build a trust on a user now user know if i'm uh, doing some transaction of 50000 rupees or 1 lakh rupees my amount is safe so that's why they are solving a problem and they are building a trust between the user and product so this is how business works if it is a youtube youtube is for entertainment purpose but they are generating revenue from the ads or for example it's a beauty product we all know that if i am going to apply some uh, fair and cream it is not going to change on my face it will be a, if it is a change then it will be a so very short amount of time but still we are using a beauty product it is a manipulative industry if we are going to uh, talk about the starbucks or kfc it is going to build a king size uh, 
इमेज वी यूज टू से मर्द सिगरेट पीता है इट विल गिव सम ग्लोसी इमेज सो देट्स वाई वी यूज टू स्मोक we used to eat a chicken because we think like it will uh, give a better health so how company is selling their product that we have to understand how company is generating the revenue that we have to understand and at a last i would say we have to move, move from a should be to can be mindset why because we all are thinking like uh, if we are writing as a test or we are writing a test case after entering a valid and you valid username and password user should be navigated to a home screen it is a truth it should should be but we have to think as it can be if i am doing some x operation why thing can be happen or a thing can be happen or something can be happen the best example of a can be thinker is a trader who invest in a stock market they predict future it doesn't mean they have to be a true every time but they somehow they are predicting and they are making the money another technical example is a hacker hacker does not have a database access api access but still they are getting into your application where tester and developer can not be they are finding some loopholes and they are stealing the data other side testers and developer has a every every access they know the admin credential they have code access but still they are not able to find a loopholes because we are stick with this should be mindset we have to broader our mindset and at last takeaways are we have to define our goals along with the goals we have to learn from others we have to collaborate the collaborate with respective team members we have to think how we are going to add value to the product it can be a by a uh, our uh suggestions it can be a code or it can be our box it can be anything we have to come we have to come up with a broader mindset we cannot stick to the one particular thing and if we do so then definitely our value should be boosted and at end of the day development and testing activity both will be tested i hope everyone you have enjoyed the session i am open for a q and a guys feel free to ask any questions you can pass it to a question section or a chat section you can share your questions if you have any doubts i would like to add one thing whenever i am teaching apis on a youtube even i have few students they all are coming to me i know the basic thing but still i am not able to do uh, proceed further the main thing is uh, they are not able to deal with the complex thing they do they have started working on apis but they don't know what is a json how to play with a json i have received one more question how to how api testing can impact roi uh, can you elaborate roi hello so how api testing can impact on a roi 
so for example if i'm uh, i'm able to understand the cost of uh, impacting api testing it is a lesser than compared to the ui testing and maintenance wise it is also low so we can add so many tests along with the apis and changes will be low and in a very short time we can perform so many ui te uh, api testing compared to the ui testing so investment should be definitely low compared to the ui testing and we have to maintenance costs will be very very low as as per my understanding and my experience there there is very minimal maintenance for api test if there are no question i am handing over to you uh, dinakar you can take it forward all right all right just we're just going to wait for a few more seconds before we close the q and a session and uh, we'll draw this presentation to a close so if you do have any questions do uh, you know leave a message on your chat box or with the question section we'll just give it a few more seconds so i have received one more question is how can we validate auth 2.0 uh, using the automation so auth 2.0 uh, there will be a two uh, two level of authentication for example let's say i have a, i'm receiving otp and i have to enter the password or like that so there are uh, nowadays google is coming with the at, at the time they are providing uh, some uh, otp so this cannot be deal with the particular thing so we have to go with the static flow here if you are running with the captcha or multiple level of the authentication they, by that time we have to go with the static things or we can ask the developer to create a data if we are if they are receiving data from the database then they can create a small api we can consume that particular api and we can uh, get the otp or something but real time it is very tough to automate or perform an end to end uh, so Uh, based on uh, your experience which is the best tool for api testing so uh, answer will be in a two perspective i would like to give uh, another first is a, oh, based on the openings or opportunities so nowadays many companies are working on a java uh, with rest assured so and it is a faster uh, in some sense so i would say uh, we can go with the java plus rest assured and but again if you are comfortable with your core thing is a let's say javascript or a python then you have to look for that particular kind of a library just a sake of api testing you can uh, no no one should switch the core things we have to stick with the first is a testing fundamental and programming fundamental if we know the java we have worked on the java then we have to explore technology around the java if we have worked on a python for a four years or five years then some person has to stick on python only if they feel he is an expert he knows all these things then only they can learn new technology and then can move to the another technology but in between they can no person or tester or developer cannot move from one technology to another technology it will be a problematic for a future another question i can see how can we uh how we can have a hands on experience on api automation if organization where we are working does not have a api or any dummy api okay so yes this is the question from many people even i am getting from a linkedin or whatsapp groups i am getting this question uh this if you have apis on a organization well and good otherwise there are lots of plenty apis are available on a uh, uh, internet uh, there are few apis like a weather apis or a few open source apis are there they, this will be very easy api you can start with those apis and later on uh, there are some public uh, integration apis are available for example trello apis are there uh, slack apis are there jira apis are there 
so we once we are comfortable with basic flow we can move to that particular jira api or trello api they are coming with the appropriate documents how to use that api how to generate the token in real time how we can integrate so later on we can practice using those apis it is free and anyone can use even though facebook also has a open login api so that also at some level we can consume those apis uh, uh one question is from uma is it mandatory to have a auto uh, automation knowledge to perform api testing yeah at some sense i would say it is a mandatory because nowadays uh, technologies is grooming and it is going to a more and more complex many libraries and many technologies are coming nowadays so that's why as a tester you, we should know at least api if not automation then how we can at least we can validate the data if we have to check the data from the db or sometimes we have to go to go for in depth validation we should have a knowledge of api testing and it is easy there are only four types of api get post put and delete with that we it is done for api testing so it is not difficult and uh, it will definitely going to add advantages to the profile if we know the api testing Uh, one question from a Sandeep. As per uh, your experience, which framework is better, REST assured or Karate? So I worked on a REST assured. Even I have worked on a Karate. Uh, but what I feel, uh, REST assured is a more open. We can integrate with as much as library and whatever the things we have to do, we can manipulate all these things. But Karate is coming with some rules and regulations. We have to follow their documentation. And another drawback of karate I can see is a karate owner is giving an answer on a stake overflow and community is nowadays very limited. So if uh, in real time, if we stuck somewhere, we have to wait for a, his uh, owner. I guess he, he is from Intuit. So he's answering on stake overflow question. So we have to wait until he is going to answer. Uh, Dinakar, I cannot see other questions. All right. Uh, well, if there are uh, no more questions, then we'll call it a day because we're also uh, uh, way beyond our time. So uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing your valuable insight uh, with some practical examples in the real world scenario, Nishant. You know, your presentation has covered a lot of practical pointers and provided us with, you know, experiential knowledge, which we don't get outside. Uh, and it's been a true honor. It's, it's truly an honor to be hearing from you. So we want to thank you and we also want to thank each one of our participants for joining us at our second webinar on the break free stage uh, we are sure nishant's insights on api testing has sparked a few ideas that you can take back and implement uh, we just you know and if you have any questions uh, do uh, do write to us or you can write you can follow uh, nishant on these handles on his instagram handles and uh, write to him as well so, uh, but do feel free to reach out to uh, the PCloudy team by writing to us, uh, you know, at info at pcloudy.com. That's on your chat uh, box that you will see. So if you do have any questions, do pass them on and we'll try and answer them as soon as possible. Well, thank you for, for being a, a wonderful audience and a patient listening. Uh, have a good day. Thank you, Nishan. Thank you for all your help. Thank you, Dinaka. Thank you, Pre Cloudy team, and thank you everyone for joining.